Hello everyone, welcome to my sketchbook tour. It's definitely been a while. Um, for this sketchbook tour, I will be using several different types of paper because I've been on a journey to explore different types of paper. So they are mostly not attached to a particular pad, but I can talk about the different types that I've been using. This first one came as a recommendation from a viewer to try out the Stonehenge 90 pound, 100% cotton. Um, I do like the paper. I like the thickness of it. I like that it has some smoothness. It has a little more texture or tooth than I was expecting. At the time, I didn't know what to do with it. I think I would have a better sense now. But for the one drawing I tried with it, this is, oh, I think I tried a couple, but this is the drawing I'm going to show you of one of my best friend's dogs as a puppy. This is Pepsi, a beautiful, beautiful Pepsi. And at the time, I wasn't quite sure how to get the pencil entirely smooth, but I feel like it actually adds a nice effect in this drawing. And so I'm kind of pleased with it as sort of a, well, maybe a velvety kind of texture. Um, in the future, if I had wanted something to be more smooth, I might have used the Caran d'Ache blender, blending pencil, and that would probably help things out that way. But, um, thank you to my lovely friend for giving me permission to draw this dog and share the image. So that was what I had to show from the Stonehenge 90 pound. What I've spent the most time using so far is my uh, Strathmore pastel paper textured finish and it has different uh, tints which are nice. I try to choose a tint that will be sort of the medium shade of a drawing um, so that I can focus more on the highlights and the darkest colors. This is a drawing that I got uh, an image that I uh, the original photo came from some kind of stock image. Uh, it's not entirely uh, symmetrical or accurate. I was more just trying to have some fun and do a like, loose drawing of a cute puppy. It came out a little more cartoonish than I was intending it to be, um, but overall I'm fine with it. You can watch that as one of my videos of dogs I don't know personally. Recently I drew this picture of my own eye. The reference picture is my own. It's uh, my husband is taking this picture of me and so you can see his figure in my eye because he was there taking the picture of me. Um, I decided to draw this for bi week. I used bi pride colors, pink, uh, blue, lavender, um, and that's why I drew my eye. And I thought it was kind of nice. It was a little fun. I used mostly pencil. I do believe I used some black pen uh, for the eyelashes and for the pupil. But other than that, it was mostly just the pencil and the white, the highest, um, the brightest white is the paint pen, the Sharpie paint pen. Next here is another pet of one of my best friends, and she has this beautiful cat, Muka. I got the image from her Instagram, and she gave me permission to draw it. I just love this cat's proportions. The size of the eyes are kind of amazing. It almost, it seemed unreal when I was doing it, but I double checked that those are actually the proportions um, that are correct. And this was one of my first times using this pastel paper, and it was before I had the blending pencil. So you can see some of the texture of the paper that I hadn't yet really attempted to smooth out all that much. Um, I was also kind of happy to have the texture. I thought it sort of added to a sense of fur at the time. Um, maybe now I might try it with a blending pencil, but I, I'm pretty pleased with how this drawing of Muka came out. So thank you as well to my other friend for letting me share this image. This cat, I believe, came from Pixabay. So I spent more of the time focusing on just the eye uh, since my owl eye drawing had been pretty popular, I thought, well, I can do one of a cat. And again, for this one, I chose a color that was sort of a cream shade that handled the m main tone 
of the cat so I can focus on special oranges or browns or the darkest shades or the lightest shades um, without having to fill in all the middle tones. And it's funny because the longer I spend working on the eye, the less I can tell that it looks like an eye. But now that I've been away from it, I can go, oh, yes, that looks like an eye. So I'm happy with that. This here is a blueberry that I drew for one of my friends. I spent a while on it. In fact, I tried to draw another blueberry previously and had a lot of difficulty. And even for this one, I think it wasn't until I added the black that the definition and the depth really started to show. It was kind of fun being able to use this blue toned paper as the main base. Um, so yeah, I look forward to giving this to my very good friend. Here is the cake that I did for the more recent video. Since the cheesecake with the strawberry on it was so popular, I thought I might as well try to do another cake that had a similar uh, look to it. This is a strawberry shortcake that I found on Pixabay. I really liked that it had the cake reflection. I liked being able to work with the strong highlights. But even this is an example of sometimes walking away from your work can help you get a better grasp on what you need to do with it. Because when I was first doing this one, I spent a long time on the drawing. And I'm sure you can see in the video that for a long time, this part of the cake is not in line with the rest. And so I was very, very close to just throwing the whole thing away. I walked away certain that it was hopeless, a lost cause. But when I came back, I realized, oh, it wouldn't be that hard to fix this. So I did. And then I was able to share it with you and we could celebrate the one year anniversary of this channel. So thank you so much for watching. The next part I can show you is I've been working more on watercolors than I have in a while. And so this pad, I guess I can show you the top here, is a Strathmore watercolor 140 pound cold press paper. I liked that it has a top where it's all attached and it has the spiral, though somehow when I did this first drawing, I did not think to keep it attached, so it is actually separate. But you can watch the video of me doing this tulip. Originally, I took the reference photo for this tulip myself, and then I did a colored pencil drawing of it last year. And then I used the colored pencil drawing as my reference for this watercolor. The advantage of that is I had already figured out where I wanted the shading to be and what kind of color choices I wanted to do. So I didn't have to make sort of artistic choices with the watercolor while I'm still learning the general technique. I did only use three colors while doing this tulip. I used yellow, red, and blue and mixed the colors as I went along to get the oranges and the greens and the purples and the grays. I'm pretty pleased with how it came out. Um, probably could heighten the darks and the lights if I had spent more time on it or if I did it again. I'm still learning watercolor. The other video that perhaps you've seen is my Galaxy Plum. It was pretty popular on Reddit. It got something like over 800 upvotes. Um, it was kind of fun because the original plum looked like a galaxy and so I decided to turn it into an actual galaxy plum doing watercolor. The white and the black is pencil and I do have the white paint pen um, and possibly some black ink for definition on the darkest spots. But yes, yeah, so that's the plum. And I also did this tulip here. This was another tulip that I just thought was so gorgeous in real life. I didn't quite convey it in a realistic way. I, I just wanted to do stuff with the colors and play around. And so by the time like this shape was getting like really out of hand, I decided, okay, I'm not gonna do this in a really representative way. I'll just play around and have fun. And that's more what it is. It's more of an exploration of color. You can see I even tested out different colors on the top, which I don't normally do. And then even played with some shades in the background. So that was what I did. And then this was my first time trying a landscape in a long time. 
It was based on a reference picture I took. I used the greens straight out of the pans in the Cotman set, so I did not create my own greens, which was something that had been suggested to me, made it less uh, realistic. But I kind of liked the non-realistic aspects to it. It went along with the little dots of white that came from the masking pen. Again, if I were to try to do this in a more realistic way, I would use a finer tip masking pen. And I, as I do in this next version of it, because I decided to redo it because I wasn't happy with it, was I used natural greens that I made myself. This one has more realism to it, but I feel like it loses some of the life of the previous image. I think part, part of the problem is also the original image does not have a strong sense of light and dark. And so when I'm drawing it, there isn't this very striking bit of where the light is and where the dark is. It's kind of everything is more of a mid-tone even in the photo. And perhaps to make a more exciting drawing would require taking a picture that has a more exciting aspect of light and dark. At least here there's a little bit more of that light and dark and here there's certainly the, the highlights and the very very dark places um, in it. And so yes that is the complete tour of what I can show you for right now. I do have some more drawings I've been doing for family and friends uh, and perhaps a commission coming up. Unfortunately I don't own those images and or the reference images so I don't have permission to share them but Pepsi says love you all thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day